Let's talk about one of my favorite social technologies, which is play. As you can see here, people are running into the center pretending to have a lightsaber battle. Now, when we were children, play was very different. Play was when we acted out a different character and we wrestled each other and we were really in an imaginary world. And there are certain activities that we can use to get people to engage in this form of play. Not the play that you do when you're playing a board game or you know playing charades. I'm talking about the imaginative, really energizing, joyful play. So as you can see here, I'm given the rules of the game and I'm telling people that they have a lightsaber in their hand. I'm also sharing that they have the ability to use the force. Uh, you know, as usual, what I do is I create a giant huddle, right? I create a giant arena so everyone can see each other. The audience versus the stage often destroys engagement, puts people into spectator mode. And that's why I'm such a big fan of plays because it puts people into participation mode, okay? The same facilitation leadership principles apply here. I'm speaking with emotion. I'm very, I'm feeling good, right? That's so important when we're trying to get people to do something as risky as playing, right? Because it's not allowed because adults don't do that. You got to feel good. And then the feeling comes through your vocal cords and people are like, I want to do this. I want to try this. So there's the big crowd. I got an arena set up and uh, people are down on their knees. <laughs> Look, that, that guy right there was practicing, right? Um, you know, obviously uh, alcohol really helps, right? Um, because adults often don't want to appear doing these things sober. So, um, you know, maybe just <laughs> give your group a, a shot. Uh, it's better than not playing at all. Oh, you see that person there? Okay, here it goes. So this is the battle. Holy crap. Yep, people just got tackled. Um, this man right here in the pink, he is he is really using the force, right? The, whoa, see the facial expression? And now, oh, look at that. We got the phones coming out, right? So oftentimes when we create a playful arena, people want to film because it's so special. It's so We're so deprived of this form of joy. I'm writing an article right now called Your Daily Dose of the Greatest Antidepressant. And in the article, I argue that play and dance are the greatest forms of antidepressant, of shared joy. All right. So before we even begin to explain the rules as I'm doing right here, it's really important to get people warmed up. People are not gonna do this right off the bat. We gotta elevate people's physiology, get the blood flow going, and create that psychological safety. Create some form of unity in the group, And right? That's another reason why I love getting people into circles, is it creates a sense of unity, and with unity, there's psychological safety, right? When we unite, and when we're all committed to doing the same thing, there's much more safety to take risks. If everyone's taking the same risk, it's safer to take the risk. All right, so see here, using the force, giving those clear instructions. The other principle here is that people want to know what to do. You got to give them clear instructions. The less instructions, the more vague it is, the more people need to think about what to do. But if you give them super clear instructions, then they know how to play the game and everyone else knows how to play the game. The whole crowd is engaged and you know committed, visibly committed to playing the game. You'll see everyone's on their knees. They're committed to playing the game. So everyone else who sees that is like, okay, well, I'm going to play too because everyone else is committed. So there we go. The, yep, the alcohol flies in the air and bam, playfulness happens. Okay, so how else can we create playful moments? There's databases of games out there. But what I really recommend you try is put on a theme song of some sort. Uh, maybe it's Thriller by Michael Jackson, or maybe it's Kung Fu Battle, and really get people to just pretend like they're in the world where the music was made, right? So there's, you know, Mr. Roboto, there's the Kung Fu Battle song, there's Mission Impossible, right? That's what we did after this exercise. 
get people to run around like they're spies. Music is an incredible way to create an alternative world where people can play pretend. Last thing I'll leave you with is that play, the emotional exchange, the joy exchange happening between all these people here, right? Through eye contact, through touch, it's primarily mediated yeah, through those two things, eye contact and touch. And so games which involve physical contact, consensual physical contact, right? Everyone knows that the game involves that. These are the games that are gonna create the most shared joy and the most oxytocin, okay? If we think back to when we were children, oftentimes we just kind of wrestle with each other, right? And like kind of pick each other up and like push each other, right? Now that pretty much only exists in a mosh pit these days, right? It's not really acceptable to do that as an adult. So what I wanna leave you with, few principles. First of all, giving clear instructions of the games, showing that the group is committed to the game, and finally, um, choosing games with the physical contact. Physical contact is really important. And then what will happen is you'll create a crazy gladiator arena of play where people, yeah, throw their shirts in the air and tackle each other. Yeah, maybe this isn't too appropriate for a corporate environment. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, bye.